Good evening, friends. Today we're going to get Magic ML set up. Magic ML is an AIDE. It is an AI development environment for creating chatbots and workflows and pipelines and other kinds of uh, AI ML sort of task based uh, sort of projects. Uh, it requires Docker, Yarn, and Node.js 18 or higher. You can use NPM, but I suggest you use Yarn instead of NPM. Uh, you should use Docker. You don't need Docker. You could set up the containers, especially the Postgres database, locally. But we suggest you use Docker. It's a lot easier to get set up. Um, and you should definitely make sure you're using Node.js 18 or higher. Uh, we're using some of the latest isomorphic uh, JavaScript stuff. You know, I, isomorphic means that's it's like the front end, um, and that requires Node.js 18. Um, if you're going to do any of the more advanced voice video processing stuff that we have available, um, including Discord voice, um, you should make sure that you have, um, also, sorry, uh, uh, Google search or any kind of uh, browser uh, automation, you should make sure that you're installing uh, Chromium, FFmpeg, and XVFB. Um, and then we can get installation, right? Um, to get our goal is to kind of get to this window, or at least sort of a blank version. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to clone the repo. Um, I al you also need git installed, obviously. Um, you can do this with the GUI git. Um, I'm going to do this in Linux on my terminal. It's much the same. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to go here. And I actually have the project installed, but I will do this from a, a new, uh, from the perspective of a new install. So let's make a new terminal. Go out here. And I will type in git clone magic ml and I will say uh, demo magic ml. Great. And it will take a little while to clone. It's quite large. Um, okay, while well, that's going, let's talk about what we're going to do next. Uh, npm install. Well, I did say we should use yarn. Um, you can use npm install or you can use yarn. It's whatever you want. Um, I'll use yarn install. Like this. Nope, sorry. Let me go in there first. So I put the CD into my folder. And then I'll use yarn install. And so as of right now, we have quite a lot of dependencies in here. We're extracting them out into um, a plugin system so you can install Discord or Twitter or whatever kind of plugin you want, um, and, or many plugins. Um, with the goal of being able to route data from, you know, you can your agent can connect to Discord, but also be connected to Twitter and, and use both as data sources, input and output. Um, right now, all of that's actually in, internal to the project, so it's quite a large install. So while that is installing, um, I do have uh, another cake uh, that's been in the oven for a while. Um, this is just another install of MagicML. So assuming that that install is finished, the next thing we're going to want to do is npm run dev. Now this is the quick start. I'll show you the slow start after we've done the quick start um, because it's a lot easier for development to split up the uh, these pieces in case you want to refresh things. So npm run dev. And that's going to start up Weavy8, database, all these containers, with cache server, which is Redis. Goes through. Redis? Redis? I always wonder. I hear it both ways. I should go see what the founder said. Um, it looks like the server is loading on 8001. And probably somewhere buried in there, our client started up on mm, 4200. Yeah, so that's our, our client. So we're going to open that up. Um, so there's a couple of common gotchas that I'm going to show you. Um, one of them, I'm going to make a new temporary window. Sorry, I'm just going to do this off of my screen. Because I've already opened this here, and I've already accepted my certificates. And you might have an issue, and I want to make sure that we just troubleshoot that really quick. Um, so you probably won't have any open windows. Oof. I'll close that. And it will probably look either like that window 
or like this. Um, but I'm going to take that into my temporary window to show you this troubleshooting thing real quick. So we're using self-signed certificates um, and SSL. So you can avoid this by creating your own SSL certificates and putting them in the search directory of um, the, the project repo, but you're probably not going to do that. You're probably going to want the easy thing that doesn't require understanding a bunch of certificate stuff. So I'm going to show you the sort of hacky way to get around that. Um, if I go into my console, you will see that I have an error and I'm stuck on this. Please wait. And so if you're stuck here, you see this, I'm going to check your console. You don't have to check your console. You can just go there, but it's a lot easier to find where you got to go by checking your console. So I'm going to copy this link address. I'm going to go to it and you'll see my connection is not private. Um, the reason is, is because the certificate authority that issued the certificate is not associated with my, uh, like my computer doesn't trust it basically. Um, and you know, your computer won't trust it either. So if you press advanced, you can proceed to localhost. Now <laughs> I'll help you with one other troubleshooting thing. You might say, well, but I don't see an advanced. Okay, great. So let's load Chrome, right? We'll see an example of that. Um, I recommend using Chromium for development. Uh, just generally, it um, has some nice features, but Chrome is nice too. So that's going to load up. And I'll just uh, load up profile. And if I go to this, you will see, oh, hey, look at that, advanced. Okay, well, it actually allowed me. Now, in previous versions of Chrome, it didn't allow me, and uh, so what I would type is "this is unsafe." If you're not, if you can't get through on Chrome, type "this is unsafe." You can also type "I know what I am doing," but I suggest you type "this is unsafe." It's just shorter, um, and you can look it up. You know, you can see that on like a Mac, you're gonna have to do that in order to get through. Um, you know, it is unsafe, but we're connecting to ourselves. I, I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, so you can see we have no spells. Um, this is actually our backend server. If you type slash spells to our server, you can see it's got no spells. But in our front end, we can also see there's no spells. Well, let's, let's refresh that really quick. And then you can see we've got no spells for sure. So let's create a new spell. Um, I would like my spell to be named. Hmm. I'm just going to echo my response back. So I'm just going to I'm going to call it echo. The goal of this is I want my input to be my output. So this is what you should be seeing. I'll hide my inspector. Um, so let's just give a quick outlay of what's going on here. Um, this is called your composer. This is where you actually built your node graphs. You can put node graphs inside of node graphs. And so this is kind of how you compose them. Um, up here, you can add many node graphs, open many up, um, and, and kind of sw switch between them. Um, over here, if you have a node that has text editor, uh, it will show up here. Let me show you what that looks like. If I go and create a variable, let's say a few shot variable, which is just a fancy way of saying, you know, AI way of saying prompt or text. Um, I will, uh, you will see that I have a text editor right here, right? And I can save it and then I can take that and put it into other things. It's very useful for building um, few shot templates and other kinds of uh, tasks. I have a state manager. The state manager, um, I can store state across the graph. So I have the ability to write and read state. And I also have access to the state in certain nodes like the code node. Um, so this, this is kind of a way to track graph state uh, if you want to. You really don't have to use this, but some people like to think of like kind of a, you know, having state that uh, propagates from the beginning to the end. And then you can grab that state and then even like bring it back in the next loop and put it back in. Um, at the start so that you can create kind of a statefulness that way. Um, I tend to use events and recalling events for kind of the stateful loop, uh, but this, this is a good way to do it. And this is also fairly um, performant because it's just passing an object around. Um, the event manager. So this lets me view all of the different events. Um, events, uh, I can just arbitrarily create and save events. Like if I, uh, in my agents, I can store an event. Um, events 
that's how I store conversation usually. Um, the primary event is like a main event, and then if you want to store a secondary event, you can put it there. Um, and that would be like the speaker sends a message and then the agent responds to it. Um, or the topic changes. And maybe you want to store the old topic in the, in the topic change, right? Um, and that way you only have to recall the last topic to also get the old topic. Um, and then you can even do like comparisons and you know, things like that. Um, what else? We also store facts this way, um, but usually I only use the primary event and I'll just add facts. Um, or I could add agent facts in the primary event and speaker facts in the secondary. Um, you know, I can imagine a lot of different ways I might use that. Um, I also have a uh, recall event, right? event recall. This is kind of the opposite. This actually gets the event back. Um, great. So um, then I also have an agent manager. So agent manager lets us create agents. Agents, uh, so in the UI is not too great, but basically you put in like your OpenAI key, your Ethereum keys, and then you can enable different, excuse me, um, a, uh, connectors for your agent. Uh, this is how you can have an agent that, uh, you know, is multimodally aware of input and output streams on all of these different uh, uh, sort of um, platforms. Uh, so right now we're really focused on Discord and Twitter. Um, the rest we have written the code for and tested at some point, but they're temporarily deprecated. We'll bring them back with the new plugin system. Um, but the two that we're really focused on are, are right here. Um, and if you want your agent to do any kind of AI stuff, you will definitely need to put an open AI key. Cool. Um, the avatar down here is for previewing. Uh, I will play back voice and mouth moves. Eventually we'll have uh, integration with our character creator stuff. This is a little bit temporary right now just for testing. Um, but this, this is designed to sort of all unified interact with your agent so you can uh, communicate with a, an agent if you want to. You don't have to do embodiment. This is just kind of for fun. You can totally close that. And not even think about avatars as part of your thing. If you're just doing rest graphs and stuff, don't, don't worry about the avatar. Um, so this, this whole thing is actually exposed as a REST API. Um, right now it's unauthorized. We're assuming you'll bring your own authorization and wrap that on top. But um, if the community wants authorization, we'll add it, um, or someone wants to build it. Um, that means that if you were to expose this to the internet, people could access these graphs and run them. Um, if you built the authorization on top, that also means that you know you can safely just build REST endpoints with this tool, not not even really thinking about agents or anything at all. Um, but the agents are really a way to create the statefulness of a of a of a. The agent, the difference is that the agent carries its own state and does its own action, as opposed to somebody coming and hitting your REST API and basically just calling this graph right here and getting an output. But if you wanted to have an, uh, just you know, a REST API builder that ran your notebook, this could be really, really helpful for running some arbitrary JavaScript or Python or notebooks, or, or of course, a whole complex pipeline of logic and all of that. Um, so, sorry, I digress. Going on into... Uh, the rest of the, the UI here. Um, you see we have the uh, the playtest uh, and the console. So the console, let's drag it over here. Um, the console shows you output of certain nodes um, and the playtest lets you drive input into the nodes. So the playtest, there's two different kinds of ways you can use it. Um, but I'm gonna have to show you uh, in the context of kind of building up this, uh, this little graph we're gonna do. Um, so I have a trigger in, I have an input, and I have an output, right? Great. I'm going to um, take the trigger in and make sure that it says receive from playtest. And for this output, I'm also going to make sure that that is true. And then for the output, the same. I'm going to send a playtest. I want to make sure that those are all true. And then in, in the middle, I'm going to add uh, an echo node. And the echo node just shows me a result of whatever is coming through. Uh, but one thing, this may be fixed, but we've noticed that if you just kind of drive the output directly into the input, the, the graph runner doesn't really like that because it doesn't have any work to run um, to set the values. Um, so we have to have some kind of work between our inputs and outputs. I mean, we, it's kind of an edge case that you would ever not have some kind of work anyway, right? Even if it was just a decision to not send work. So this is kind of the most MVP you know, a minimum viable graph, right? Just get some input, send some output. Um, I can save it by going to File, Save. Um, and I save pretty constantly. 
Um, also, since this is very, very alpha technology, I highly recommend that as you save, you also export your spells. That way, later, you will be able to uh, import them back into your graph. Okay, so um, all good. Got your input, got your output, uh, got your echo. And let's say, hello world. And you can see, well, I said hello world, and I got a response of hello world. Uh, and so it did what I expected it to do. Now, if I were to not have those connected, what would happen? Ah, nothing, I get no response. So clearly uh, this echo is doing what I expect. Um, you can also verify that the control flow is coming through. And, and another nice thing is, um, say test, you know, this, this green will show you uh, nodes that run and nodes that don't run. So where, if I had another node here, you know, I don't know, Boolean gate, take a while. Um, let me do that again so it's not highlighted. Hello. You'll see it's not highlighted. And it shows you the execution flow of the, the graph. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, there's obviously quite a lot to get into with all the different things, but just to keep it simple, um, this is kind of how you get started. Um, I guess the last thing that I'll show you is importing graphs. So um, if you want to, say, load Eliza, which is our uh, in-development sort of AI project, uh, go to the file, go to the open menu. Let me do that again really quick. Open spell here, and you go to the import button right there. And then uh, you go to your downloads, and you'll, I don't know, just randomly open one of those. Look at that. Very cool. And there you go. Um, just got a random. I mean, obviously, this is another. Uh, test bellows running. Um, and that's it. Hopefully that was helpful.